The Foreign Service does a great deal for the United States, but sometimes it's hard to tell because we're actually not in the United States. We go around the world and serve as the face of America. We represent our interests, and frankly, we work for the people of America. It's something that all of our diplomats are very proud to do. It is a great honor to be able to serve our country the way that we do it. The job here is to set our diplomats up to excel. We give them the skills, the knowledge, everything they need to do their jobs, both in terms of a specific assignment in an individual country where they learn about that country, its language and history, but also the broader skill sets. We teach them how to be great leaders, how to think about strategy and do critical analysis. We also teach them to cherish and represent America, to understand our core values, our culture, our innovation-based economy, so that they can teach others about it and let others learn from it. All of our diplomats come to the Foreign Service Institute at the very beginning of their career, from the earliest days when they raise their hand and take the oath of office, uh, throughout their tenure with the Department of State. And here at the Foreign Service Institute, it is our job to set our diplomats up to excel. That means giving them the specifics they need for an individual job. The issues ranging from things like human rights to counterterrorism, international trade and global environmental issues, we give them all of that. But we also teach them about the countries they're going to serve in, the languages they will have to speak, and the skills they'll need, ranging from everything as negotiating and persuading to managing a strategic plan, thinking through critical analysis as events are unfolding on the ground. And we're also teaching them here how to say, stay safe when we send them into rough places. Because really what we want our diplomats to do is have an impact, have a positive effect, make a difference in the world that serves America and makes it a better place for our friends and allies and for people everywhere. Well, as, as I think many people know, the Foreign Service has evolved over time as America has evolved. And we really had two pieces of legislation in the 1900s that set up the modern Foreign Service, uh, first in the 1920s and then more recently in the 1940s. President Truman actually brought into life the modern Foreign Service through a piece of legislation called the Foreign Service Act. In that legislation, it was underscored how strongly the president and, and the cabinet felt about diplomacy as a learned profession, a profession that requires advanced knowledge and skills. And so that piece of legislation also set up the Foreign Service Institute. And over the course of many decades, we have served America by training, educating our diplomats, making sure they have everything they need as they go forth to represent our country around the world. It's incredibly important to have trained diplomats on the ground, and it's easy to assume that because we have so much electronic access that we can pick up a phone or simply watch something on television. And when you do that, you know what is happening. But what you don't know is why. You don't get the nuanced understanding from a phone call or watching an image on a video that you get from someone who is there, who knows the players, and who also knows what isn't in the headlines, what isn't being seen on the video camera, but that is a part of the process and may unfold. But there's another thing beyond the knowledge. What you get from diplomats on the ground is action. We're not just about knowing what is happening around the world. The United States is one of the few global powers. We have interests everywhere, and we have a desire to shape events. Our diplomats are the people who make things happen on the ground in light of events and often in front of them. Without them, we don't have the information we need, and we don't have the ability to act and shape events. It is a complex mix of what makes a great Foreign Service officer. And first, you need to think about what's happening in the world. 
what is it that we want American diplomacy to accomplish? And 2,000 years ago, a Chinese theorist by the name of Sun Tzu had a famous quote. He said, the, the art of war, the, the true mastery of art of war, is subduing your enemy without ever having to fight. That's the job of diplomats. Preventing conflict, when conflict occurs, we are the ones who navigate through it, try to negotiate a lasting resolution. And that's not new, but the world is more complex today. We've got many more problems and many more opportunities that we have to deal with simultaneously. So for our diplomats, we are trying to give them very sophisticated knowledge and skill sets we also want to make sure that they represent America. We are the face of America around the world. But also we are, if I may say, the heart and the spirit of America. We are embodying our values. We are, are showing the best of America through our actions. So we need people who don't just speak the language and know the issues, but are also able to convey really the magnetic attraction that America has to offer for so many people so that they can learn from our lessons and make their own decisions. We also need people who are prepared to take smart risks, who are great leaders, who can see through the fog of a crisis or of a difficult circumstance and understand how to navigate forward in a way that brings a great result, not just for us, although we serve America first, but for our friends and allies, for the circumstances in any given situation that we're dealing with. The diplomats of America today are real patriots. These are people who have chosen to dedicate their lives to public service, serving our government and our people. They are people who go knowingly into a life of sacrifice and risk. We talk a lot here at the Foreign Service Institute about the circumstances they will face. There's risk in every circumstance. We give them a lot of training on security issues here, talk about, prepare them practically for the things they're going to face. They know that the world represents a lot of threat for them personally and for our country, and that's why they're here. That's why we're doing this. Our job as diplomats, first and foremost, is to protect the security of America at home. We also work to advance American interests around the world, to alleviate suffering wherever we can. But job number one is to protect American security. That's why we're doing this. The Foreign Service Institute was founded in the 1940s when President Truman signed legislation establishing the modern Foreign Service. Along with that modern Foreign Service came the Foreign Service Institute because the President knew that it was a profession that required very sophisticated learning. We've had a number of homes over the intervening decades. We've been located in a number of places and only came to this campus in the early 90s. But there's an important symbolism about this campus, not just that it is a place where all of our diplomats, all of the employees of the Department of State come for training and learning, but the history here. This place started as a school for young women. And then during the course of the war, this was a place that the military used to do some very important code-breaking activities. And that combination of both, learning and public service, is really what FSI is all about. Um, we have, of course, evolved with the times. And it used to be that the Foreign Service Institute was a place where our diplomats would come between tours. They would spend a set period of time and then move on to their next assignment. That's not the world of today. We are sending out learning through a variety of means, everything from traditional distance learning courses to short uh, TED Talk type training things. We're using technology. We're reaching people in the field. We have teams that we send out to our embassies when a need arises or people discover that they have a gap in their knowledge or their skill sets. We're out there to help them. The Foreign Service 
is the face of America. We represent our country around the world. And we as an institution are, committing, are committed to making sure that the face of America that we show is indeed America's face. And that means that we have people from every background, every gender, every race that is represented. Uh, and I know that there have been a number of efforts in the past to increase diversity in the Foreign Service. Um, I myself am a product of that. There were not so many women in the Foreign Service in the past. We talk a great deal now. We've made a number of significant efforts to advance diversity, and it's ongoing. It will make us stronger it will make us better as a diplomatic service. And I, that's a commitment that this Secretary Kerry, our current Secretary of State, has, has talked extensively about. His predecessors also have been committed to that. It's an ongoing and intensive effort in the department. We have often said that we need to give our country the very best. We want to find across America, in every state, in every group, the most talented, the most dedicated people that we can find. And our admission process, which involves both a written test as well as a battery of oral examinations, is designed to help us winnow that down. The numbers of people who take the initial test is actually quite large. Many thousands take it every year. And as we go through the filtering process, we generally end up just with a few hundred that enter each year. The United States has a very extensive examination and entrance process for our diplomatic corps, for the Foreign Service. Other countries have, some countries have a similar process with a written and an oral exam. Others, not so much, and it's a, it's a more casual approach. Yes. Inside the Foreign Service, we have what we, the, we use a term called cone, but it, it is a professional specialization. We want people who are experts, people who can function around the world and bring their talents and their expertise to bear. And so the way we do that is we designate people who will focus across their career on different aspects of diplomacy. Some people focus on public diplomacy, reaching out to publics around the world. Others focus on issues related to economic matters. We have at the moment five specializations, political, economic, consular, management, and public diplomacy. But there's also a great deal of overlap and interface. We're a team in every embassy, no matter where we go. People work across these specializations to make sure that we're achieving the goals that we've set for ourselves in an embassy in any given country. Well, I, I wish I could give you just one challenge for the Foreign Service in the next 90 years. Um, I will tell you I think the world is changing in dramatic ways. And often it's hard to tell exactly what direction that change is taking. But there are some very significant challenges that are going to face us in terms of security threats. There are also some significant opportunities that we need to make sure we are ready to seize and to maximize. We need to evolve as the world is evolving, make sure that our people have the traditional skill sets, but also are acquiring those things that will enable them to be effective 10 and 20 and 50 years into the future. And that's a large part of what we're trying to do here at the Foreign Service Institute. The return that America gets the dividend from the investment in the Foreign Service, in America's diplomats, is enormous. Think about being in the world without having people that represent us around the world, people that act in our interest, early warning actions, post-conflict stabilization. Think about being an American tourist or an American businessman and not having 
an embassy or a consulate to go to to address your interests. Frankly, I believe that America could invest more in the Department of State, more in our diplomacy, not just financially, but in understanding what our people are doing. Because really, America's diplomats are our sons and daughters. These are men and women from all over the United States who are the sons and daughters of families everywhere. They go abroad and they work for them. We serve the people of America all across this country. And we do it with great pride. We are honored to serve. We do it with a commitment to make sure that we are doing the right things for our country and for its best interests.